welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is my match reaction from the Shamrock Rovers versus Apollon game. Um, I'm just literally in the door there now. Um, I was just coming in from Tallis Stadium. This was the second round qualifier and the first leg, which is obviously played at home by Shamrock Rovers. Um, so starting off with the team, obviously starting off the, the formation in itself was quite regular to what Stephen Valley's done, especially um, in the run of, of the Europa League. Played with three in the middle and then two wide men for the back, so and then one in front. So it was essentially when when they had the ball, it was almost like a a three, a five and a two. And when they didn't have the ball, it was almost like a one and a five and a four. Depending where where the ball was on the field. So <coughs> So yeah, so they played with Dan Carroll up front, which was understandable, obviously, because he was he played quite well in the last Europa League qualifier, and uh, I could see why they they were trying to play him all, all, almost as a like a target man, in regards to the fact that they were sitting so they're going to have to sit so deep at times in the game. So uh, starting off, Apollon were straight at the blocks. I could see the way they set up was was quite quite smart, quite intelligent because they played with three strikers right up on the back three on their feet so essentially any time they try to roll with the player from the back they would press them at an angle and quite aggressively so the angle so it was forcing them to, to play it long um, so they couldn't pass the ball inside and it was almost cutting off the wide area so they would have to play it very very long so um, that was quite frustrating for Rovers at the start of the game because they were really struggling then to, to get a grasp of the ball and obviously Rovers they like to recycle possession so anytime they were getting the ball in midfield they would play it sideways and then they would look to play forward obviously but if they couldn't then they'd go sideways and then backwards if they had to so a problem were very very narrow set up in the middle so anytime Rovers got the ball or won it in midfield they would have to play it sideways and then they, if they couldn't go forward or inside again then they'd have to play it backwards and then of course the press would happen and they'd have to play it long and it was it was unfortunate for Dan Carr because he really struggled tonight because he was getting fed a lot of long balls where no one was around him and he was playing against a very very tough very tall very strong uh, centre back um, so it, it was very it's very, it very hard to see them getting any chances and Apollon you know of course straight out of the blocks first five minutes they scored the first goal um, but a lot of balls were getting played wide and crosses and you were thinking to yourself look they're going to score eventually and, and they did within five minutes a cross came in and it was it was basically half cleared out to the edge of the box and their captain caught it on the half volley centre midfielder caught it on the half volley and it was a lovely hit strike and it rippled at the top corner and one of the best goals I've seen in a long time and you're thinking when they scored that so early and the way they'd come out so quickly, I was thinking, you know, th this could be a this could be a bad night. But Rovers, you know, Rovers didn't give up. Even though at times they were really struggling to get chances or or get a hold of the ball, they were still frustrating Apollon. You know what I mean? They they weren't really letting them have many chances either, and uh, were fighting a lot of the fifty fifty challenges and um, trying to break up any form of play they had. So Apollon's chances were coming from wide areas as well so they were equally just as, as narrow and, and uh, compact um, it was, the only times you could see really Rovers getting chances so when the ball was dead from the goal kicks and you could see when Rovers had it at the back when the goalie you know I could hear some fans saying you know roll it out here short roll it out here short but you could see that they didn't want to because they knew immediately if they rolled it out short that we're going to be pressed straight away and the ball's going to have to go long so it was resulting in, in in defenders and goalkeeper having to just play it long towards Dan Kerr so you're thinking right the only time they're going to get chances now is if they win the ball back and try to take advantage of the team in counter attacks and in transition by exploiting the space uh, when they're out of shape so Apollo had the ball a couple of times in the last third and uh, Rovers win the ball back and it looked like they were going to get in 10 counter attack by playing at Dan Carr's feet and it was immediately broke up by the experience of Apollo by fouling um, them professionally from behind and stopping any, any form of momentum so I was thinking to myself the only way they're going to get chances here now is if they win the ball higher up the field and hopefully get something from that and possibly uh, maybe even a set piece probably would be the, the best chance 
and it's exactly what happened then halfway through the, the second half um, they won the ball in midfield they worked a chance taking a shot and it obviously deflected off a pollen player and they got a corner and this was about probably I, no so it wouldn't be the midway through the second half it was probably around the 14th minute 15th minute uh, so about 10 minutes after the first goal and ball had been crossed in and of course uh, Lee Grace heads it across goal goes in the back and I thought for a second Dan Carter, Dan Carter just got his foot to it and put it in but uh, no it was uh, it was it was a goal for uh, for Lee Grace so yeah the, the first half like upon after that were still quite organised and you were struggling to see you know it, it was really up for grabs the game really and and it was still the same kind of thing where Rovers were really struggled, struggling to kind of create chances that anyone's were coming from wide areas and Apollo weren't really creating many either so at half time when they're coming off it, you were thinking it was up for grabs but I was kind of getting excited thinking to myself you know the second half is going to be very good because usually in these games they are because especially Rovers now they're more than midway through the season so fatigue is now going to set into the team where um, although the players are fit they're not fre- they're not fresh anymore. Do you know what I mean? Fatigue has accumulated over the season, and now you're going to see mistakes from both teams, and things open up because Apollo weren't going to be able to press from the front the way that they could in the first half, and you just knew that was going to be the case. And that's what happened in the second half straight away. Literally, the, probably the first twenty five minutes, and I'm not even I'm not being generous there. The first twenty five minutes, it was all rovers, um, straight out of the blocks, um, fifty fifties, everything were winning them. And they were just getting the ball out wide as quickly as they possibly could, forcing Apollo in certain areas to to foul them in in the corners and things like that. Uh, constantly crossing the ball in across, then they'd win it at the other side and they'd cross it back in again. And you're thinking like like um, not only are they, they could they go ahead here, but it could be three or four. And they got a, a free kick at the very start of the second half straight away, and Jack Byrne just put it wide at the front post and that kind of set the tone then for the, for the rest of the half ball went, went wide again and uh, they won another free kick crossed in uh, it was on the exact same to- side from the corner kick uh, in the first half so it, this time it was in swinging in towards the front post Lopez of course a guy that scored plenty of goals this season front post flicked it onto the back post in the back of the net a 2-1 up and I kind of had a laugh to myself when he scored it because he scored it right in front of the ultras end and uh, you know I was recording it and uh, all the fans uh, were very well behaved like so uh, yeah yeah so it was a, it was a, it was Rovers been held in a very great light um, tonight and even uh, another thing I was going to say is even the ultras they were singing them, their chant and chants in the first half and even when the first goal went in. Uh, for Apollo and they continued their chant through the whole celebration the whole way so it, w- it was great to see and uh, anyway so it kind of went on like that then for the, for, for the rest of the half for a, lot, for a large spell of it where they're, they had a lot of crossing chances and every you know you're thinking yourself they, they have to get a third here they have to get a third and hit the crossbar as well in the second half and then it lulled then for about five to ten minutes where Apollo were trying to get themselves back into the game and Rovers were then left to long balls again and, and Dan Kerr was really really struggling because he, especially in the second half um, it got to the stage where the centre back was getting out in front of him for for long balls and handing them away and anything he was receiving to his feet then the centre back was getting in front of him and winning it off his feet so um, and you could see Boyle at some stage was getting very very frustrated with him so I was thinking to himself he, he's going to have to be taken off here and Green was brought on and he brought a completely now different different phase to it now whereas Rovers now were going from creating many chances in the wide areas now to actually splitting them down the middle because Apollo was starting to commit people forward. There was a lot of chances now getting played over the top, counter attacks where they could uh, where they could score. And uh, there was one really really good chance then in the second half uh, where Green the ball had been playing over the top of the Green, uh, one on one the keeper and just gone around him, took a touch to his left hand side. And it, it went a little bit too far of an angle, and Green had to take it with his with his left foot to put it across, and very tight angle, and it went over the bar. So, uh, yeah, look, maybe if it was on the other side, maybe he might have scored. But look, if what's a maybe's, um, wasn't lucky, and you know you would think yourself, look, the second leg's coming up next week. It, it'd be great if they could bring a third goal or the side was now. 
the game went on the the Cyprians at Apollo Nuku started to get very very frustrated um, really struggling to great chances they had a few free kicks from the right hand side and the left hand side cr- crosses but Rovers were, were dealing with them quite well and in the first half uh, the winger for uh, Apollo number 20 had essentially um, I turned in on, on Jack Byrne and he went over it seemed like a dive at the time but he was running around as if he'd been injured and Jack Byrne got quite angry at him and squared up to him um, thinking that he had dived and he was trying to give it to Jack Byrne saying that he had injured him so I saw in the I saw in the tunnel at half time when they were coming out for a second after they were arguing about it so anyway that was taken down in the second half the 85th minute when Rovers were 2 two on ahead it looked like they were probably going to get a third and number 20 lunged in two feet and got a straight red sent off which is another big plus then for, for Rovers then you know uh, going into the next leg because he was probably one of their better players for large parts and you look at the game now it finished 2-1 it could have been 3-1 it could have been 4-1 it would have been nice to bring an extra goal but look if they can just make sure that they're very hard to beat away you know any form of a draw is a plus you know uh, nil all one, one all look as long as they go through it's all that matters but it was really a good night tonight very very professional from from Rovers I would say in their performance very very uh, organised and um how they handled the whole occasion in general, and very they, when they won, won the one nil down, they just never lost their head. Uh, continued to plug away, kept their shape, and uh, even though they were starting to create chances in the first half that didn't let them down, in the second half they, they knew that obviously a 10 15 minute gap was going to come where they were going to have some sort of momentum, and they took it with both hands and made sure that they got themselves ahead. So, and uh, even when they were behind and they were struggling, they made sure that they were getting some chances. So, yeah, it was it's all around. It was a great night, great night of football, and. Uh, yeah, um, really looking forward to seeing the second leg next week. Everyone, uh, that's it for my match reaction, but I'd just like to say, if you want to keep you up to date with all of League of Ireland's games, in terms of results, everything going on, with players' interviews as well, also coverage of uh, interviews with press conferences and games with, with uh, Irish managers, football players, make sure to subscribe to Irish Football Fan TV on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Okay, thanks very much.